Hey there, Twisters. So let's talk about the playoff picture. So in the Eastern Conference, we have a crazy race right now with just about four or five games remaining. We've got five teams competing for playoff spots. And really, I thought this was all but solidified about two weeks ago, but a couple of teams have gone cold. A couple of teams have caught fire. And so things are gonna get really interesting as we figure out who finishes third place in the Metropolitan Division. That's a guaranteed playoff spot. And then who gets that second wild card coming from either the Metropolitan Division or the Atlantic. So we'll profile each of the teams competing for those spots. And of course, in the comments down below, let me know who do you think is going to wrap up these two playoff spots in the East. The West is pretty solidified, barring a crazy collapse from the Kings or Golden Knights. And then of course, you've got the Blues that are still mathematically in it. For anybody new here, we'll be covering the playoffs with live streams in addition to other videos. And if you guys are interested, see the pinned comment down below because we are doing an NHL bracket challenge where we can compete against each other to see who can correctly predict playoff winners and the Stanley Cup champions. So again, see the pinned comment down below. So the five teams we'll profile here include the New York Islanders, the Detroit Red Wings. So both of those teams are technically in a playoff spot as I make this video on Monday the 8th. We've also got on their heels the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Washington Capitals, and the Philadelphia Flyers. Now the Sabres and also the Devils are still mathematically in it, but really it's nearly impossible that one of those two teams will make it. Wouldn't that be something? And the way the playoff picture looks right now, whoever finishes third in the Metropolitan Division would battle the Carolina Hurricanes in the first round, unless the Rangers just collapse over their next few games and the Canes win that division. It looks pretty unlikely at this point. And then whoever finishes in the second wild card, be it from either division, they'll play the team that has the best overall record in the Eastern Conference. That does look like the Rangers. They are kind of closing in on a president's trophy, but the Bruins are still very much alive in that race as well. So the first team we'll look at is the team that occupies third in the Metropolitan Division, and that's the New York Islanders. I'll be reading off my screen here with some notes. So the Islanders are currently third. They're seeking their fifth playoff berth in the last six years. They're the only team out of this group that actually made the playoffs this last year. And of course, they are working with Patrick Waugh as their head coach who replaced Lane Lambert mid-season. They did have a six game winless streak in March. They've had some stretches where they've been hot and cold under Patrick Waugh, but they've won four in a row. They've out outscored their opponents by a margin of 12 to 6. Although the only playoff caliber team they've beaten in this stretch is the Nashville Predators, but I'll also credit them for beating the Panthers and Jets in recent weeks. Now, in terms of key contributors during this stretch, Kyle Palmieri has been one of them. Good kind of career resurgence for him. 11 goals in his last 18 games. Matt Barzell, continues to be at a point per game level, three goals and seven assists over his last nine. And in goal, the guy who's really picked up the mantle recently is Semyon Varlamov. So in his last five games, he has a 938 save percentage. Will they lean on him more for their last five games to rest up Sorokin for the playoffs? And the Islanders, I just wanna mention this for all teams, they didn't really have any major additions or subtractions during the trade deadline. So their roster has been pretty constant. So looking at the Islanders schedule, they do have two more remaining games against the division lead Rangers and the Rangers haven't locked up that division technically just yet so they'll be playing for that and also the chance to finish first overall in the Eastern Conference and have the home ice advantage although some teams don't necessarily play as well at home the Islanders also have to play the Canadians last place in the Atlantic Division they have a game against the Devils and their final game which will be very important is against another team we'll talk about in just a minute here and that's the Penguins our next team is the Detroit Red Wings and it's been since 2016 since the last time they made the playoffs. It's been forever. It was looking like they'd wrap up a wild card spot earlier in this season, but then they went on a terrible skid. Having Dylan Larkin out of the lineup certainly contributed to that. And they're just two, three and two over their last seven games, but they're still very much alive here. Those games, those losses were mostly in close games. The only one they got blown out in was against the Hurricanes in Carolina. Sorry, Detroit fans for uh, kind of jinxing you by going to that game. But the Wings will still be alive as long as Alex Lyon continues to kind of take up the mantle. He has a 934 save percentage over his last six games. And actually, James Reimer has picked it up as well. Only 24 goals allowed in his last 11 games and a 924 save percentage. Since Dylan Larkin has come back from injury, he has five goals and three assists in eight games. And really, this team has mostly been the same roster-wise, with the exception of trading away Clint Costin. As for the Wings, remaining games they have to first play the Capitals one of our five teams we're discussing here then they're against the Penguins so again good intermingling between some of these teams trying to 
get those last two playoff spots. They've got a game against the Toronto Maple Leafs, who've had a very strong second half. Then they finish with two games against the Canadians. So if they can, at worst, weather the storm against their first couple of opponents, they have a good chance at perhaps clinching this second wildcard spot. Now let's get to the Penguins, and this is a team that we were used to seeing in the playoffs every year. They missed it last year, and that was the first time since 06, which was Crosby's rookie year. And you also have to consider that they traded away Jake Gensel at the deadline. However, Crosby has definitely been taking the team on his back. In his last eight games, he has seven goals and nine assists. He was just named the second star of the week in the NHL. Michael Bunting did come over in that trade from Carolina, and so far he's been a key contributor with five goals and eight assists in 16 games. And Alex Nedeljkovic, a great story this year, kind of like Alex Lyon. He's been able to resurrect his career after some really tough times in Detroit. His last seven games, he's sporting a 926 save percentage. And a key thing for the Penguins here is that they have 31 wins in regulation. So that means if you're tied with somebody else for points at the end of the season, then you have the advantage because you've won more games in regulation and kind of look at it this way, right? In overtime of the playoffs, it's five on five. It's not three on three. So the regular season overtime doesn't mean as much, especially the shootout. That means even less. I should have also said earlier, the Penguins have won four in a row and they've won six out of seven. And some of the opponents that they've beaten are quality teams, including the Hurricanes, Rangers, Capitals, and Lightning. And as for their remaining games, this one's today against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Again, Leafs, very good second half. Then they've got the Red Wings who we just talked about. Then they play the Boston Bruins, a team that's trying to wrap up not only their division, but also first overall in the Eastern Conference, if they can usurp that from the Rangers. Then they have the Predators, and it's not necessarily guaranteed the Preds will be second wild card or first wild card, so that's still a storyline to follow. And then the Penguins finish up against the Islanders. And as for the last two teams here, the Capitals and the Flyers, just about two weeks ago, it looked like they were going to cruise into a playoff spot, but since then, they have both pretty much free fallen. So for the Caps, they missed the playoffs last year after eight consecutive seasons of making it. Over their last six games, they're just 0-4 and 2. Their goal differential now has slipped to minus 41. So Charlie Lindgren has had a fantastic season. He's had more of a hard time as of late. He hasn't been able to carry the team to the degree he was throughout the season for the most part. And really this points out how the Capitals have just not had enough firepower. Some of the young players have been good role players for them, but still, when you look at goal scoring, first of all, they traded away Anthony Mantha, who had 20 goals and 14 assists in 56 games, but they really haven't gotten enough other than Alex Ovechkin and Dylan Strom when we look purely at putting the puck in the net. And even more critical is that they're not generating enough chances. So only once in that six game stretch have they generated more than 26 shots on goal. They only had 22 shots against the Ottawa Senators yesterday. And it was interesting because the Capitals were actually catching fire a little bit after the trade deadline, after dealing away Yevgeny Kuznetsov, and we thought, hey, maybe that's addition by subtraction just given the situation there. Anthony Mantha, I mentioned already, and Joel Edmondson was also traded away. As for the Caps' remaining five games, they've got the Red Wings first of all, then they battle the Sabres, who are still mathematically in it, then they take on Tampa, who will be the first wild card, barring any sort of weird collapse. They've got the Bruins after that. So, I mean, these are some really tough games. And then their final game is against our final team here, and that's the Flyers. They were in third place for seemingly forever at them, and then the Caps kind of came along. But Philly, it's almost as if the carriage is about to turn into a pumpkin for them. They're seeking their first playoff appearance since 2020, and the first for John Tortorella while he's been coaching there. But they're just 0-5 and 2 over their last seven games, they've been outscored, oh boy, 33 to 15. So averaging just over two goals and conceding over four per game, almost five. Travis Konechny, I've been singing his praises quite a bit. He's had a fantastic year, but he's gone cold with just a goal and three assists over his last seven games. He's been such a huge offensive catalyst for them. Tippett has still had his goal scoring during this period. And Joel Farabee had also bounced back pretty strongly for most of this year, but he's been pointless in his his last eight games and he has just nine points over his last 30 games so again a team that doesn't have a whole lot of offensive weapons especially when we've seen somebody like Sean Couturier regressing or just not meshing with what John Tortorella wants to implement we know about the benchings he's had a shoulder injury that's kept him out the last two games he has zero points in his previous seven games it's just been a really rough time for him unfortunately and between the pipes Arison hasn't been able to perform at quite the level he was at earlier this year in his last 11 games he's given up 
38 goals and has a save percentage of just 844. And I think he's been pulled a couple of times as well. There has been a little bit of turnover with the Flyers roster, but at forward, at least they've had the same guys there for the most part. Eric Johnson, the, the defenseman from Buffalo, was acquired at the deadline, but the Flyers also dealt away Sean Walker to the Avalanche. And then earlier this year, they acquired Jamie Drysdale in exchange for Cutter Gauthier, but Drysdale has, uh, he actually missed all of March. As for the Flyers' final four games, they first take on the Montreal Canadiens, so the Canadiens will be facing a few of the teams that we mentioned here. Then the Flyers battle the Rangers, so that's going to be a very tough challenge for them. They finish up with the Devils, who by then should be mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, barring any sort of weird collapse, and then they finish up against the Washington Capitals. So again, as you see, these teams are going to be battling each other over the next week and a half, and also they'll be taking on other other teams with something to play for like the Rangers and like the Bruins. So anyway, guys, which two teams do you think will wrap up the final two playoff spots in the Eastern Conference? Will there be any other changes in the standings in the East? Let me know your thoughts and stick around for more coverage of the playoffs and see the pinned comment down below if you want to enter our bracket challenge. Saying thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new and want more stuff like this. I'm Nick and I'll catch you twisters later. Ciao.